Hello students, welcome to the Indian Council of Medical Research Online Prescribing Skills Course 2020 for the Indian Medical Graduate. I am Dr. Chetna Desai, Professor and Head, Department of Pharmacology, BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad. And today I will be talking about adverse drug reactions reporting. Please attempt the 5 multiple choice questions provided to you at the end of the assignment and give a feedback. These MCQs are present in the assignment section of this module. This module on adverse drug reaction reporting is the third of a series of 3 modules on this topic. The module has been prepared by the ICMR RUM Center at BJ Medical College Ahmedabad and is authored by myself and my co-authors Dr. Kartike Parmar, Dr. Prakruti Patel and Dr. Samit Shah. The module has been reviewed by Dr. Suparna Chatterjee from IPGMER Kolkata and Dr. Dennis Xavier, St. John's Medical College, Bangalore. At the end of the module, the learner shall be able to explain the importance of monitoring and reporting an adverse drug reaction, enlist common methods of reporting an ADR with special reference to the pharmacovigilance program of India, report an ADR to an ADR monitoring center of the PVPI independently. We have learnt in the earlier modules 1 and 2 of the adverse drug reaction that prescribing medicines requires a fine balance between understanding and judging the efficacy of a medicine as against the possible adverse drug reactions that it can cause. We have also learned that adverse drug reactions account for hospital consultations and admissions and also contribute to a significant morbidity and mortality in patients. We also appreciated the fact that majority of adverse drug reactions are preventable if appropriate precautions are taken while prescribing the medicines. Adverse drug reactions are an important cause of non-compliance to treatment and poor treatment outcomes. We must understand that a drug is administered to a limited number of patients and subjects during the drug development process. Therefore, rare adverse effects may not be known or detected with the available clinical trial data. Therefore, adverse drug reactions occurring less frequently and after chronic use of a medicine can only be known with the help of continuous ADR monitoring which is an important component in pharmacovigilance. Hence, what is pharmacovigilance? Pharmacovigilance as defined by the World Health Organization is the science and activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding and prevention of adverse effects or any other drug related problem. Why is pharmacovigilance important? World all over it has been appreciated that pharmacovigilance contributes to improving patient care and safety and eventually public health and safety of the common man. It contributes to the assessment of benefit, harm, effectiveness and risk associated with medicines. It promotes rational and safe use of medicines and helps reduce cost and poor clinical outcomes associated with adverse drug reactions. Pharmacovigilance program of India under the aegis of Drug Controller General of India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is functional since 2010 in our country. The objective of this program is to promote the safe use of medicines through contributing to appropriate education in pharmacovigilance and training activities across the country. The pharmacovigilance program of India has provided the healthcare professionals with various tools for reporting an adverse drug reaction. The most commonly used tool is what is known as the adverse drug reaction reporting form version 1.3 which is to be filled up by the healthcare professional and submitted to the nearest ADR monitoring center functioning at all the MCI approved medical colleges across India. The adverse drug reaction reporting form can also be submitted directly to the national coordinating center PVPI New Delhi. A mobile android application has also been developed for submitting the adverse drug reaction directly to the PVPI. The PVPI also provides a toll free number 1800 180 
3024 for submission of an adverse drug reaction. These reports can also be submitted via email pvpi at ipc.india.net. Recently, the consumers in India have been allowed to report adverse drug reaction through the use of the consumer reporting form which is available in 10 vernacular languages. As per the guidelines of the Pharmacovigilance Program of India, all healthcare professionals can report an adverse drug reaction. Hence, these include the clinicians, the pharmacists, the nurses. Additionally, the pharmaceutical industry as well as the consumer can also report adverse drug reactions. As per the PVPI, any untoward event during any treatment observed by the healthcare professional should be reported, which means that any ADR whether serious or non-serious, known or unknown, frequent or rare should be reported. All adverse reactions related to use of a medicine be it the allopathic, homeopathic, ayurvedic, uranium siddhi or occurring during use of vaccines, herbal products, nutritional supplements, blood products, medical devices and implants are reported to the PVPI. Let us look at the logistics of reporting an adverse drug reaction. How do we report an ADR? So, the vital steps in reporting an ADR include first and foremost the healthcare professional needs to diagnose the ADR, then gather the relevant details of the adverse drug reaction and finally report the ADR using the ADR reporting form mentioned earlier. So, how would you diagnose an adverse drug reaction? Please remember that any unintended noxious or harmful event which is observed during treatment of an illness is known as an adverse drug reaction. So, this could be a new symptom or a new clinical sign or a new laboratory abnormality that is observed during treatment of an illness. Now, let us understand the reporting of an adverse drug reaction through a case study. This is a case of Mr. Sanjay Maru who met with an accident and had head injury. He was admitted to hospital and treated with phenytoin 100 milligrams thrice daily. He was also prescribed injection ceftriaxone 1 gram intravenously twice daily, injection mannitol 20 percent 350 ml intravenously once daily, injection ondansetron 4 milligrams intravenously thrice daily. After 5 to 6 days of treatment, he developed skin and mucosal erosions, edema and was diagnosed to suffer from Steven Johnson syndrome. The suspected medicine, phenytoin in this case was stopped. Patient recovered after a few days. The unexpected event in this case is SJ syndrome. This adverse drug reaction led to prolonged hospitalization and required intensive care management. Now, how will you report this adverse drug reaction in the suspected adverse drug reaction reporting form? Now, this form that you observe on the screen, this is a suspected adverse drug reaction reporting form that is used to report the adverse drug reaction to the PPPI. This form consists of four parts A, B, C and D. Part A consists of the patient information. Part B consists of details to be filled up for the suspected adverse reaction. Part C consists of details of the suspected medications whereas a part D gives the reporter details. On the reverse of the form you will see certain instructions and advices about reporting namely what to report, who can report, where to report, what happens to the submitted information and what are the mandatory fields that are required to be filled in this suspected adverse drug reaction reporting form. Please make sure that you go through these advices carefully before beginning to fill out this form. Also the form carries the details of the email, the PVPI helpline that is a toll free number as well as the ADR mobile app that could be used as tools for ADR reporting. It also carries the address of the National Coordinating Center for Pharmacovigilance Program of India at IPC Ghaziabad. Now, let us look at these fields one by one in detail. 
four parts are mandatory to fill in this ADR form. These are number one, the patient details, number two, the suspected reaction, number three, the C part that is a suspected drug as well as the details of the reporter. Please remember that the patient details and reporter details are kept strictly confidential. So, let us see how we would fill the details of the case report in this ADR reporting form. Now regarding the patient details, we see we need to fill up the patient's OPD or IPD number. We need to fill up only the initials of the first name and the surname and not the complete name age of the patient is mentioned in years or in case of uh, neonates and infants in months. Weight if known may be filled up, it is not actually mandatory, but sometimes it is required in pediatric patients and in patients on antituberculous drugs or when changes in weight are expected due to medicines. So, here in this case we filled up the patient details Sanjay Maru as SM, age of the patient is filled up, gender is male, weight is 80 kgs. Now, this is the details of the IPD or OPD registration number. Now, these details that is AMC report number and the worldwide unique number are not to be filled up by the reporter, rather they will be filled up by the AMC that is the adverse drug reaction monitoring center to which this report has been submitted. The second part B is the details about the suspected ADR. Now here it is very important to mention all the details of the suspected adverse drug reaction. So we need to mention the details of when did the reaction start, when did the reaction stop, if the reaction has not stopped at the time of reporting then we mention continued. Also a brief history of the patient, lag time of occurrence of the ADR, diagnosis of the ADR in terms of abnormal sign, symptom or lab abnormality that has been noted. What was the action taken, whether the suspected drug was stopped or not and finally, how was the adverse drug reaction treated. These details need to be filled up. Let us look at this example. Now this section B tells us about the suspected adverse drug reaction. We have written here event or the reaction started on 21-10-18, it was recovering at the time of reporting has the onset lag time between the starting of the reaction and the reporting was 6 days and we have mentioned the details of the event like for example patient was admitted after head injury, he was given treatment as mentioned in column number 8 and 11 which would be coming later, he developed redness, itching and blisters all over the body including lips and oral mucosa after 6 days of suspected medications. He was diagnosed as a case of SJ syndrome, suspected drug was withdrawn and patient was improving at time of reporting. These need details need to be filled up very carefully. The relevant tests and history of the patient also need to be filled up. If ADR is a lab abnormality or if the adverse drug reaction is supported or confirmed with pathological, biochemical or imaging results, we need to mention the accurate details in column number 12. Also, if the patient is suffering from a concomitant disease or reports history of a major disease, it is mentioned in column number 13. In this case, we mention not applicable for columns 12 and 13. The seriousness and outcome of an ADR are mentioned in columns 14 and 15. An ADR is considered to be serious if it causes death or if it is life threatening or if it requires hospitalization or prolongs hospitalization if it causes a congenital anomaly or a disability or is considered medically important by the clinician. If the adverse drug reaction fulfills one or more of these criteria, we mark it as serious, if not we mark no. Similarly, the outcomes of the ADR may be marked as recovered, recovering, not recovered, fatal, recovered with sequelae or unknown based on what is observed by the reporter. Hence in this case, since the patient was hospitalized due to the adverse drug reaction, we mark this adverse drug reaction as a serious ADR. In this case, on the day of reporting, the patient was recovering, hence the outcome is marked as recovery. Now how do we fill in the column of suspected medications? For suspected medications, consider only those drugs that are prescribed before the occurrence of the ADR. and 
collect all the relevant details like name of the drug including the brand or generic name, the route of administration, dose, frequency, indication of the use of drug, start date of the drug and the date of stopping the drug. If the drug has not been stopped at the time of the reporting of adverse drug reaction, please mention it as continued. The suspected medications are based on clinician's judgment and knowledge of the drug. Now in this case, now the column C mentions the details about the suspected medications as you can see in the form it mentions about the name of the drug, the manufacturer if at all the details are available including the batch number if the details are available, expiry date if the details are available, the dose that has been used, route, frequency, date of therapy that is starting date, stop, date of stopping, indications and causality assessment. The column on causality assessment is not to be filled up by the reporter. Also the action taken with respect to the suspected medications in terms of whether the drug was withdrawn or the dose was increased, reduced or not changed are to be filled up in column 9. Sometimes these details may not be applicable especially for single use drug or if or in cases of death of the patient. Information about reintroduction of the suspected medicine is filled in column 10. If the suspected drug is reintroduced then mention whether the same ADR has recurred. Here we need to understand two terminologies that is de-challenge and re-challenge. De-challenge means if after stopping the medicine or reducing its dose there is a disappearance of the adverse drug reaction or reduction in its severity. In that case we call it as a positive de-challenge. If not it is known as a negative de-challenge. If the suspected medicine is reintroduced after a positive de-challenge and if the adverse drug reaction reappears we call it as a positive re-challenge. However, positive re-challenge is usually not done for ethical reasons. Now in this case the suspected medicine is tablet phenytoin. We fill in all the details regarding the dose, the route that is oral route frequency of administration, the date of starting the therapy, stopping the therapy, why was the medicine given that is for head injury and here the causality assessment has been is not to be filled up by the clinician rather it is filled up by the AMC that is the adverse drug reaction monitoring center to which this ADR has been reported. Now in this case the drug was withdrawn so we mark it here and the drug was not reintroduced in the patient hence we mention NA here. Concomitant medicines are those that are used in the patient other than suspected medicines. So the information that is required to be filled regarding the concomitant medicines are the same as in suspected medicines that is the name of the drug, the route, the dose, the frequency, the indication, the date of starting the medicine and date of stopping the medicine. So in this case we had three concomitant medicines that is ceftriaxone, mannitol and MSET. MSET here is ondansetron and we fill in the details of the dose, the route of administration, the frequency and the therapy dates and the indication for each of this. All these details are filled up in this column number 11 regarding concomitant medical product including self medication and herbal remedies with therapy dates. We also provide additional information like in this case symptomatic and supportive treatment was given for the adverse drug reaction. Then comes the column of the reporter's detail where we mention about the name of the reporter, the professional address, occupation of the reporter. This is because all the healthcare professionals can report ADRs. The contact numbers, signature of reporter and receiver and the date of reporting the ADR. This field is mandatory and is helpful in case the AMC or the PVPI requires additional information regarding the ADR. But please remember that this information is kept strictly confidential. So in this case we fill in the name and professional address like say the name of the person, designation and the signature is also mandatory as well as the date of the report. So whatever reported details are available try to fill in it as completely as possible. A few points to remember, the patient's identity is held in strict confidence and protected to the fullest extent. 
Submission of an adverse drug reaction report does not constitute an admission that the medical personnel or the manufacturer of the product caused or contributed to the reaction. Submission of an ADR report does not have any legal implications on the reporter. Now you might be wondering what happens after the reporting of an ADR. The ADR report is first scrutinized by the ADR monitoring center and causality assessment is carried out. It is then submitted to the national coordinating center PVPI at IPC Ghaziabad. The adverse drug reactions are again analyzed by the PVPI for causality and other characteristics. And this ADR is also sent to the Uppsala monitoring center Sweden which maintains a global database of adverse drug reactions. Based on the various analysis that is carried out by the AMC, by the PVPI as well as the UMC, regulatory decisions about the medicines are taken. These regulatory decisions are then communicated to consumers and healthcare professionals through email, through newsletters and through other communication channels. So please remember, report all suspected adverse drug reactions even if you are not sure about them. Complete all the mandatory fields in an adverse drug reaction reporting form. The AMC as well as the PVPI will then analyze the suspected adverse drug reactions further. There is no liability for healthcare professionals for a reported ADR. Your ADR report is important for patient safety. You could use these references for further reading. We acknowledge the valuable inputs from the RUMC committee of BJ Medical College Ahmedabad as well as the assistance provided by these staff members and postgraduate students of Department of Pharmacology, BJ Medical College Ahmedabad. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you are now ready for attempting the MCQs which you will find in the assignment section at the end of this video. Please attempt that and submit your answers. Also please complete the prescription evaluation as per the tutorials which I hope you have already watched. Thank you and happy learning.